Hey guys, it's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. Thank you for finding me. Uh, if you feel like subscribing, that'd be a huge help. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. What just happened to my hair? <laughs> I look like hippie Elvis Presley. Uh, anyway, what are we here to talk about today? It's an unboxing, and it's not just any unboxing. Let me show you the box. It's an unboxing from Andrew Amphlett. So if you've ever seen me unbox stuff from Andrew Amphlett before, he's so thoughtful. He's so considerate. He's so kind. He, he always blows my mind, always. Like he sent me the Eureka Once Upon a Time in China set, like totally unprompted. Um, he asked me if there were, he, in the spring of this year, I think he asked me to get him a couple Criterion releases that are not available in the UK. They're only available in the US. So I bought those and I sent them to him. And he asked me if there were any like Eureka releases I couldn't find or anything. And I was like, I've been looking for the, or I've been wanting to get my hands on the Eureka um, Project A set. So he bought that for me. But then he also sent me a Young and Dangerous trilogy DVD and a Looper Steelbook Blu-ray. You know, Looper, the film with like Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So he always sends the most awesome stuff. And I never really know what it is. And it's always really exciting. So there's one thing in here. I know what it is. And that one thing is one of my top five most coveted Blu-ray sets of like the last five years. No joke. And it's not Hong Kong cinema. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a fair warning right up front. If you want to get out of here, get out of here. I don't know if there's any Hong Kong movies in here. Cause like I said, I don't know what's in here, but that one set um, it was another issue, like another instance of like where we're going to do an exchange. He was like, you know, like, I'm really looking for these Criterion titles. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can get those for you. And and then he sent me a text and he's like, aren't you looking for or a message or whatever? Like, aren't you looking for this release? And first of all, that's like really kind of him to remember that I was looking for that release. Right. Because I had I had posted at some point, like maybe a, a year ago or eight months ago or something like, does anyone in the UK know? Because I couldn't find it for a good price, like anywhere. It was like 100 plus bucks plus shipping. And I was like, does anyone know if the price on this is going to come down? Or like, are these easy to find on the second market, a second hand market? And a lot of people in the UK were like, we've been look I've been looking at that set too. The price doesn't seem to be coming down. It's kind of hard to get whatever. So he found it for like a pretty decent price, remembered that I wanted it and got it and sent it to me, which is just so, so, so cool. So I'm so excited to have that because it's a relatively recent release and it's movies that I have wanted to have for like probably since like 2016, 2017, I got really into this filmmaker and now they're all here and they're on this Blu-ray release. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. But I, like I said, I actually don't know what else is in here. So you are going to see my legit real reaction to opening all this stuff. I think that's actually the first thing I took out. Of. I'm not looking because I want to be surprised. There's a lot of stuff in here. Jeez, Andrew, like why? Why are you so nice to me? OK, this is the thing. This is the thing. We'll just do this first because I've been talking about it. Okay. The Roy Anderson Collection. So if you don't know who Roy Anderson is, he, he is he's a Swedish filmmaker. And he's a really interesting... This is just like, look at this. This is amazing. It's the Curzon Artificial Eye Collection, you know, which is like a really well-respected, um, I think, label in the UK. And they, um, I, I think I only have one of their releases, which is a Gaspar Noe film. Check this out. How cool is this? Are you kidding me? Okay, physical media geeks, even if you're like just Hong Kong cinema fans, that is cool. So Roy Anderson made like this really well-regarded social realist drama in, I believe, the 1970s called Swedish Love Story. And then he reappeared like 30 years later making these really surreal black comedies that are composed of like all these insane vignettes. And the first movie of his I saw, and it'll say the, the release date on here, 2014, was A Pigeon Sat on a Branch Reflecting on Existence. This movie is like mind boggling. It's just bananas. It's so dark, but it's so funny. It's so weird, but it's very compassionate. He's just such a unique and bizarre filmmaker. And then he made a movie called About Endlessness um, in 2020, which I it barely got distribution in the United States, but was kind of a continuation of the um, the style of A Pigeon Sat on a Branch. But he started that style in 2000 with a movie called Songs from the Second Floor, which is on here. And then You the Living from 2007, which is a movie I absolutely love. After I saw Pigeon Sat on a Branch, I was like, I got to see his other movies. And I went and I saw, I believe it was You the Living. And... I was like, holy hell, this movie is incredible. And it's they're very similar. They're like these movies that are so dark 
but they're so weird and funny and straight. They're like really hard to describe. And then also included on here. So it has those. And, and originally they were considered a trilogy. These three really weird, dark, surrealist films. Songs from the Second Floor from 2000, You the Living from 2007, and A Pigeon Sat on a Branch Reflecting on Existence from 2014. But then he put out About Endlessness in 2020. And that's, I and again, I haven't seen it. I've only seen the trailer. But that's apparently very much in keeping with. So now it's like a tetralogy, I guess you would call it. There's also a film on here called Being a Human Person. Set across a three-year time period, Being a Human Person peeks behind the curtain t- to reveal Anderson's unique, immersive, and at times arduous method of filmmaking. So that's like a documentary about him. Um, and then there's bonus features on here too, but I really kind of want to see. Wow. Look at this. This is incredible. Uh, this is from um, Pigeon Sound on a Branch, this thing with the monkey here. And then I believe this is from um, Songs from the Second Floor. Or no, You the Living. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember which one it's from. Okay, so, so you can get an idea of like the weirdness and darkness and violence of like. Here's Jesus carrying the cross in like whatever modern day Sweden while people are just looking at him like, who is this guy? His movies are just crazy, but I love them so, so much. And this is a Swedish love story, right? Did you see how different that looks just from, from looking at it there? Look how many discs this is. Holy hell. One, two, three, four, five. This is six discs. Okay, this like in and of itself would be like the best present I've gotten this year and worthy of of so much joy and happiness. And there's more stuff in here. I, and I know it's not Hong Kong cinema. I know. But as you can tell, I'm geeking out. Like this really is like one of the things I have wanted absolutely the most um, of the past several years. Now, I will also say if you're on the if you're interested in getting this um, from what I understand, three of the movies on here are like really great HD. Like the Swedish Love Story, I believe, is a remaster. And then Pigeon Sound and Branson about endlessness are very recent films. And they use like the HD masters of those. I think that were set out, sent out on digital copy to movie theaters and stuff like that. So those look really good. And then I hear the documentary looks fantastic. And then I've heard the other two are from the same sources that they made the DVD from. And then I guess they would have upscaled them. But but I had a serious conversation with someone about this because the cost of this is so much. I was like, is it worth getting this? Like I want so badly, right? And the person who I talked to said the two movies that are not like remasters or true HD or whatever, they're like the the most well done upscales you could think of. Like you put them in and you don't even really notice it. So, um, and that like for me to have these movies, that's enough for me. I'm just, I'm so excited and I'm so beside myself. And it was so, I mean, just for Andrew to remember, like, hey, weren't you looking for this? It's just like, he's just like such a kind person. Okay. So before this video becomes 40 minutes long, we're going to see what the next thing in here is. I'm going to close my eyes. No, I won't close my eyes because then I won't know when it's in front of the camera. But I do want to get my first look at it when it comes up into the frame so that we can look at it together. Ooh, Spartan. Val Kilmer. What? No way. I don't, so the cover art for this movie looks familiar, but I don't know if I know of this film. Robert Scott, played by Val Kilmer, is a U.S. secret agent, a man hardened by years of brutal service. He is feared by his peers and enemies alike. Hell yeah. His new assignment is to find Laura Newton, played by Kristen Bell, the teenage daughter of a high school government official who appears to have been kidnapped. I, I, I William H. Macy is in this? And it was written and directed by David Mamet. What the hell? I mean, if you don't know who David Mamet is, he's like an award-winning, extremely famous playwright who is regarded as like one of the great American playwrights of like the end of the 20th century. But he's also a filmmaker. He did like Glenn Gary and Ross. And he did he did that movie The Edge with the bear with Anthony Hopkins and, and Alec Baldwin. He's done a lot of movies. I think he, did he do The Spanish Prisoner? Because that movie is incredible with Steve Martin. Um this is crazy. This is awesome. So I love, you know, I love like shoot 'em up crime movies. As you can see, they're shooting and crime, but it's a David Mamet movie. Wow. I get like huge thank you to Andrew for this. I don't know anything about this. I really don't. This is really exciting. Hell yeah. I'm going to watch the shit out of this and I'm going to enjoy the shit out of it. All right. Should we see what this is? Come on. This is amazing. Woo. All right. What's next? Ooh, there's something in here that's not even open, that's still sealed? What the hell? All right, let's see. 
I feel like I'm getting too many comments. You know, it's like, <laughs> people are too nice to me. I don't understand why. All I do is sit in my laundry room and talk about movies. Oh, get out of here. Come on. Yes. This is the HMV UK exclusive of Mr. Nice Guy, um, which I, I'm almost positive does not ship to the US because I think the condition of them getting to release this in the UK was that they would not sell it in other territories because this was released in the United States. I'm going to open this so you guys can see it. This was released in the United States by the Warner Archive. And um, I think their condition with HMV was that you can you can put it out in the UK, but you can't put it out here to like compete with our release. But the packaging is so much better than the one on the, the Warner Archive release. And I, I reviewed this, and I think this looks fantastic on this Warner Archives remaster. I loved revisiting this movie. It's so much fun. This is just like pure fun, amazing 90s Jackie Chan action directed by Sammo Hung. It's just like, I'm a huge fan of Sammo, obviously, as you know, if you watch this channel. And Jackie Chan is the whole reason this channel exists. So obviously, I'm a huge fan of Jackie Chan. And this really is just like, like it's not the greatest movie ever made, but it is like 10 out of 10 in terms of, I want to sit down and have fun watching a Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung action movie. I just, I love this movie. This is a slipcase. Check this out. And then we open it up and we get this in here. This is so awesome. Hell yeah. Add it to the collection. Oh, and then you can see that this is now. For some reason, that's whenever I sing like that, I end up sounding like Scott Stapp. <laughs> so here's a little ad leaflet thing for the HMV premium collection. So HMV has a very special place in my heart because uh, if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, my mom's English. And so I, we would go to England in the summers when I was a kid and I'm a huge music fan. And uh, this was when I, in the 90s. So it was really when I was like, I turned seven in 1990. So seven to 17 was the 90s for me. And um, so I like in that era, obviously you're getting like when you're 10, 11, 20, you're like, like when I was 10, it was when I got really, really into music and I started buying all these tapes and CDs and stuff like that. And so we would always go to HMV when we went to England and I got like my first Blur album at an HMV. I got, um, I believe I got my first Ash album at an HMV. Ash, Ash and Blur are two of my all time favorite bands. Oasis albums I got like Catherine Wheel, Muse, like all these amazing bands that I still love so much to this day. And my brother would get stuff too. So like, Radiohead, like I remember my brother getting the Benz at an HMV in England and Supergrass and just like, I have just have all these amazing memories of going to HMV. So to see this stuff is just really, it's just really cool for me. There's a mini poster in here. Oh yeah, so this is, I think the, um, when it was released in the US on the, the, the cut down version with the dub, I think. Although this movie is in, in English, isn't it? Cause it takes place in Australia. Um, so it wouldn't have been a dub, would it have been? Uh, there, there is some, I think Jackie speaks Mandarin with his, the character who plays his girlfriend or his wife, um, or his fiance, cause she comes to visit while he's in Australia. But, um, the movie is predominantly in English and Richard Norton is in the movie. He plays the bad guy. I don't really have much in the way of fingernails cause my bad nervous habit is that I bite my nails. So I am struggling to open the, here we go. I was going to worry. I was kind of worried that. I was going to have to start gnawing at it like a hamster, <laughs> which is not a good look on video when you're trying to, you're trying to look saucy and cool in your laundry room. <laughs> this video is going completely off the rails. There you go. There's one of the postcards. And oh, this is fun. So this is the fight scene when the Pepsi truck goes flying everywhere. Makes me thirsty for Pepsi. Are there Pepsi fans out here? I prefer Coke. I think like probably most people do. Um, and, you know, Mexican Coke is like the greatest drink ever. Creates like Satan's elixir. It's just, you just can't stay away from it. My God, has anything more incredible ever been created by humankind? Mexican Coke. And that's just, we're just back at the beginning here. Um, but I, do, I don't hate Pepsi. Um, I always think of Van Halen when I think of Pepsi. Because you remember Clear Pepsi? And they advertised it with the Van Halen song, the Sammy Hagar Van Halen song uh, in the 90s. Right now, hey! It's clear Pepsi. <laughs> I'm making that part up, but it was it was that song. I don't remember the actual like whatever the, the jingle was, but it was that song. Um, I don't think they changed the lyrics. <laughs> I think they kept the original Van Halen lyrics. OK, so <laughs> this is like, what are we? We started off talking about Swedish art house films and now we're now we're, now I'm making up lyrics to Van Halen songs so that it's about Pepsi. I have to say one more thing about Pepsi. I lived in Tokyo for a year, if you don't know that. Now, you know that I studied abroad there at uh, Jochi University, Jochi Daigaku, which is uh, Sophia University. 
And when I was in uh, Tokyo, they had this thing that you could get the vending machines, which was it was like a can, but it was shaped like a 20 ounce bottle. And it was Pepsi with lemon in it. And my, one of my good friends used to call it lemon or Pepsi piss, piss Pepsi. <laughs> Because he thought it was like the most disgusting thing he'd ever had in his life. But for some reason, I love that shit. And I would drink, and it was like, it was like 100 yen for like the big bottle thing of it. And I, I drank the shit out of that stuff. That was really good. Okay, so there's one more thing in here. We're going to see what it is together. Are you ready? No, get out of here. Come on. I don't even remember if I told Andrew that I don't have this release. So this is Zoo, Warriors of Magic Mountain. This is the Eureka list. So this is like a huge watershed film in Hong Kong cinema. There are a lot of people, like, for instance, the screenwriters for Running Out of Time, the Johnny Toe movie, they talk about how hugely influential this film was on them. This was like the first, from what I understand, big spectacle special effects film that came out in Hong Kong and it's influenced by like Spielberg and Lucas and stuff like that but it's like a wuxia film and so here let me read you what it says here and I don't have this release um and it's a release that I've wanted for a long time and it's just one of those ones that I never got my hands on so one of the most important cinematic achievements in Hong Kong cinema Choi Hawk's Zoo Warriors of the Magic Mountain birthed the modern day special effects industry in Hong Kong and influenced filmmakers around the world including John Carpenter who credited the film as the inspiration for Big Trouble in Little China Featuring an all-star cast led by Yoon bi Yu as a young soldier named Ti Ming Chi. Chi, why did I say it like that? Named Ti Ming Chi. <laughs> Currently caught in a war between two rivals during the Tang Dynasty, taking sanctuary in a cave within the ominous Zoo Mountain, he becomes entangled in a battle with supernatural forces beyond his comprehension. So this has a 1080p presentation um, of Blu-ray from a brand new 2K restoration, original mono canto, optional English soundtrack, English subs, newly translated, select scene audio commentary from Tony Raines, interview with Choi Hawk, a lengthy and in-depth interview with him from 2020 exclusive for this release, Zoo Warriors, 93 minutes long, the export cut of the film produced for European theaters, featuring a wraparound segment with Yoon Bi-Yu as a modern day college student who's transported to Wizard of Oz style in 10th century China. What? I've never seen that. I'm honest. So I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I can't remember if I've seen this movie. And I know that sounds insane and doesn't make any sense. I can very vividly recall scenes from this film in my head. But I don't know if that's because I've seen them so many times on Instagram or YouTube or if I've actually seen the movie because I don't remember the whole movie, but I remember scenes from it so well. So I don't actually know. It's this very weird thing. The same thing happened with My Heart is That Eternal Rose. I swore I had seen that movie. And then I watch it and I'm like, I've seen that one scene. I've never seen this movie. So it's like, I don't. I don't know, but I, I really honestly can't remember. There's an episode of the Son of the Incredibly Strange film show on Choi Hart. No way. The the Jackie episode from that show that's on the Criterion release of uh, the project or the police story of one and two movies is incredible. Alternate opening credits restored with their original Western presentation. Archival interviews with Yoon Byu, Mang Hoi, and Moon Lee. And I forgot Moon Lee was in this movie. And a trailer. Oh, are you kidding me? So if you want me to review this one, I know this release is old at this point, but if you want me to review this one, I'm just so, I like drop it in the comments. I'm just overwhelmed, honestly. I mean, an amazing Eureka, Eureka release I don't have that I've wanted to get my hands on for ages. This awesome UK exclusive HMV slipcase with postcards and poster release of the Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, this movie I never even heard of by David Mamet that sounds like right up my alley and like what is one of my absolute serious like this is a holy grail for me. I have been looking for this Roy Anderson thing. So I, can't, I don't know what year this release came out. 2021. So this came out last year for like five years. I have been looking at an older release of just the trilogy um, and the price is so high. And now that this whole this is just I'm so excited about this. So my name is Will. I could go on forever. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. The biggest shout out in the world to Andrew Amphlett. I will put a link to, because he's on YouTube, you know. He has a channel, he reviews movies, and his channel is fantastic. He's just like the nicest person. Um, so go and check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description of the video to his channel. Um, I thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these releases. Let me know what you want me to review on the channel. We'll see you next time. <laughs>